Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Abhishek and I'll be your host for this webinar on visualizing data using Power BI. Thank you all for taking the time off to join this webinar. I would like to spend the next 60 odd minutes sharing a few insights on Microsoft's Power BI product, the power of business intelligence, and followed by a short demonstration. As with mo most webinars, this webinar will be recorded and emailed to all attendees. <clears throat> you are free to post questions by clicking on the question box in the control panel and we'll, we will make an attempt to address all your queries towards the end of the webinar. Please note that all attendees are in mute throughout the webinar. I would encourage you to send us your feedback that will help us improve our efforts via the email address shown on the screen. As indicated in our, in our email invite to all of you, we will offer five hours of free consulting to five lucky registrants. Participants will be randomly selected and informed via email by the end of the day tomorrow. Given an option, we would, we would, we would love to extend this to everyone present, so feel free to write to us at any time. Before we dive deeper into today's topic, I'd like to give you a short summary about Triton Software. We are a mid-level Microsoft Go certified software development company based out of Boston with a strong development backbone in Bangalore, India. We have successfully operated for over 20 years with global revenues of over $30 million. We have built technology centers of excellence in SharePoint, Office 365, Yammer, Windows, Windows, Windows Azure, and the mobile practice. With a talent pool of 100 plus Microsoft certified consultants, we have worked on over 120 SharePoint and Office 365 projects with more than 100 clients. Here's a representative list of, of, of our customers. The list include Fortune 100 companies to mid-sized firms and even a few startups across business verticals, be it ISVs, independent software vendors, or enterprises in banking and finance, insurance and mortgage, credit lending, e-retail, manufacturing, supply chain management, schools and colleges, e-learning, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> I'd like to now introduce my colleague Ravi, Ravi Kathi, a senior SharePoint consultant here at Trigent and a go-to guy on anything Microsoft, and myself Abhishek, I'm a senior manager with the Microsoft practice here at Trigent. I have a decade of experience in technology consulting. Good afternoon everybody, my name is Ravi, thanks for joining this webinar. We've been working on several uh, BI projects at uh, Trigent and Power BI is a happening uh, uh, Power BI tool from Microsoft and lots of uh, uh, rich visualizations, uh, lots of uh, new releases every week and uh, availability on mobile devices. So we are excited, uh, uh, this is the session two of uh, Power BI webinar and uh, thanks for joining again. Thanks Ravi. The agenda for this webinar is to give you an overview of big data, concepts in business intelligence and of course Power BI. We will touch upon the building blocks of Power BI and also several options you have as a user to explore the stunning product from Microsoft. This webinar is set in two parts. The first talk about BI, the process of data exploration, the range of data sources that Power BI accepts, and part B, a demonstration on how to easily correlate data from different data sources, analyzing data from social media platforms, how to easily and effect, how easy and effective it is to visualize and play with data on the mobile. This will be followed by a summary and a final Q&A. So big data is a buzzword. In its true sense, it means a massive volume of data that is so large that it is difficult to process using traditional databases and software techniques. In most enterprise scenarios, the volume of data is either too big moves too fast or exceeds the current processing capabilities. In one of our recent engagements with a Fortune 100 truck com manufacturing company in North America, the cumulative data from just one of its customers containing geolocation data of its fleet ran into trillions of records. Digital data is expected to grow at an, at an astonishing 44 times the current data over the next decade. The data just keeps growing thanks to the infusion of mobile 
and social media platforms at a rate of 1800 terabytes of data every 60 seconds. So now that I have all this data, what can I do with it? Big data has the potential to help companies improve operations and make faster and more intelligent decisions. This data, when captured, formatted, manipulated, stored, and analyzed, can help an enterprise gain useful insights to increase revenues, get new customers, and improve operations. This brings me to my next slide on business intelligence. BI is a technology-driven process to analyze data and present actionable information to help businesses make more informed decisions. BI encompasses a variety of tools, applications, and methodologies that enable organizations to collect data from internal as well as external data sources, prepare it for analysis, develop and run queries, create reports, dashboards, and visualize this data. A BI system or a BI exercise will help you perform customer profiling, better customer support, market research, product profitability, inventory and distribution analysis, and so on. The potential benefits include accelerating and improving decision making, optimizing internal business process, increasing operational efficiencies, drive new revenues, and thereby gaining a competitive advantage over business rivals. In essence, all of us would want to know what, what's tomorrow going to be like. It's all about foresight being able to predict the future of a product or a business. Over the last decade, BI has evolved from a traditional descriptive analysis, answers to questions like what happened, to diagnostics, why did it happen, to predictive, what will happen, to prescriptive, what should I do to make it happen, to preemptive, what more can I do? Along with some common pain points that are shown in the slide, a company-wide BI initiative, it is also worthy to note that most companies today have access to all of this large amounts of data across their business operations, be it either in legacy systems or in software programs such as Excel and Access. Departmental seldom, uh, systems seldom talk to each other and multiple programs make it difficult to retrieve valuable information in a timely manner and perform analysis on the data. Having worked with numerous BI platforms and packages here at Trigent, Microsoft's Power BI is probably the easiest, most user-friendly, and intuitive BI tool available. Power BI by Microsoft is an analytical tool that analyzes a host of data sets from disparate sources to provide deep insights through rich, customizable dashboards available across devices and platforms. A high-level architecture of Power BI can essentially be broken down into three main components. A data or a data source component. It could be Excel, SQL Server, or an on-premise database such as Oracle or SAP, and also the cloud. Owing to the large active Microsoft community, new plugins and APIs are routinely developed to allow for integration across several other databases. The second component in the Power BI architecture is essentially the BI modeler or the engine the brains behind Power BI, and the third is essentially a visualization tool that helps create and visualize rich dashboards and reports and publish all of these onto the cloud to allow for collaboration and rendering these visuals across devices. Learning and using a BI tool has never been this fun and easy. It does not require a dedicated team of data scientists with advanced degrees in mathematics. It's as easy as collating all of your data, getting this into the Power BI environment, and churning out dashboards and reports ready to publish. Power BI takes away all of those complex, manual, time-consuming ETL tasks, as most of these processes are automated by the Power BI engine to a very large extent. All of us love Microsoft Excel. It's a really simple tool 
to use to make do with day-to-day -day reporting and also some visualization. Power users of Excel will beg to refer. Excel does allow you to do a lot of complex multivariate query which requires considerable amount of knowledge and experience. Imagine a typical enterprise with several departments servicing a multitude of business operations. Let's say that Excel is used extensively across the business. Now for a C-level exec to better understand the overall health, operational efficiency of a business would require a mammoth data collection task across departments. Prepare the data to ensure consistency and map the common fields to allow for deeper analysis. This would take months of manual effort and quickly becomes a non-starter. Good useful data is often left residing in silos. In its, true, in its true essence, Excel data, although can be shared across the organization, does not allow for collaboration and rich visualization. So how does one overcome these common challenges? Power BI, with its unique subscription model, allows for breaking down of data silos. It takes minimum effort to collate data, be it in any format, and from a variety of sources, both internal and external, clean the data and with a click of a button visualize the data on rich dashboards and reports, all of which are intuitive and do not require a power user. Reports and dashboards can be readily published online and shared with decision makers. Rich visualizations can be easily rendered on mobile devices, which we will demonstrate in the next section of this webinar and allow for users to collaborate and make quick intelligent decisions. The most unique feature of Power BI is that it promotes self-service BI. No power user required, no investment on, the on a dedicated data scientist team, and really no infrastructure cost to bear. It's as simple as, I have a question, I get my data, I prepare, visualize, and share. Microsoft offers a desktop-based interface of Power BI and a cloud-based subscription version for you to publish, share, and collaborate. Power BI renders effortlessly on the mobile, allowing for some unique features which Ravi will demonstrate in a bit. A typical, BI, a typical BI exercise traditionally involved a complex, rather time-consuming data exploration process from collection, describing the data, exploration, inspection, cleaning and formatting, and finally modeling and analytics. With Power BI, most users will be able to create rich dashboards in a few minutes. It starts with a data discovery or a collection phase, followed by a data model phase, which Power BI automates to a very large extent, and you visualize and publish your data on the cloud. Here's a representative list of the various types of data that can flow into your Power BI setup. Easy connectors available at a click of a button work with a list of databases, be it SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, My, uh, MySQL, and others, a host of file systems, Excel, CSV files, XML. It also integrates very well with the Microsoft Azure cloud, cloud offering, and also a vast number of external sources, be it Facebook, Salesforce, MailChimp, QuickBooks, and many, many more. I would now like to invite Ravi to take over and run you through a demonstration of the Power BI system and a few case studies and samples of our recent work. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, that introduction should help me go right into some demos today that we've lined up. And what you see right now is a Power BI desktop. This is a free tool available at Microsoft that you can download, connect to the various data sources that Abhishek just uh, showcased in the previous slide, and put together some of the visualizations and interplay between them with as visual filters, publish this onto a Power BI service, and share with the rest of the users in the organization. So I have this already downloaded and set up on my box. Let's start getting some data and visualizing uh, the information that we have. So what we have uh, to go through is a trucking data. Uh, we have one carrier's information, top hat carriers out here, and they have a couple of branches, a south and the north branch. We just have some limited uh, data out here and uh, just showcase how we can demonstrate 
some of the default and the uh, new visuals that are uh, that a community from Microsoft contributes to see in a very rich animated fashion. And uh, th there are customers who are shipping uh, you know, uh, using these uh, carriers, uh, fisheye furniture, gateway imports, and uh, we have the driver data, and from the city where where the uh, it's getting uh, truck from to and to locations, and uh, it's also capturing uh, revenue information, expense, and the commission for the carriers. So what we'll do is we'll try and plot this data on some of the visual uh, components available from Power BI. So I have this uh, data already collated from uh, several different data sources. Uh, just to so, show some uh, quick visualizations, I have this imported into an Excel file. So I'll bring this Excel file into the Power BI uh, desktop environment. So that's the tracking information we just saw in the Excel file. I'll load this in. So these are the basic uh, visual components available uh, by default with Power BI desktop. So I have the tracking data. And we can drag and drop these columns. I have a blank page into this area. And once we have the visuals ready, we can publish this onto the Power BI service, which is a cloud-based uh, service offering. So I'll start with the customer. And let's see uh, the revenue information by the customer. By default, without selecting any visual, it gives you a tabular form data. So to start with, I will do a donut chart representation. And I'll just start adding a couple of more visuals in here. So the next one is a stacked chart. So this stacked chart, what it does is it paints the area based on the measure that you select one on top of each other. So against a specific uh, uh, X axis that you want to see. In this case, I've chosen month name as the measure, as the dimension, and we will choose the uh, revenue, expense, and the commission measures. So as you see this data stack one on top of each other, you'll be able to visually see and relate is the expense being uh, more with respect to revenue, how are the co uh, commissions contributed towards this uh, this particular month. So that that's a uh, second visual. So one more, a bar chart. It's just like the stack area chart. You can plot the same axis and plot the different measures against that particular axis. So in this case, let's see the driver data. So we have the revenue, expense, and commission captured at the level of a driver, uh, the branch, and, and the carrier level. So we can see the same data. It automatically summarizes based on the uh, x-axis, the, the dimension that you choose. And it will give you the plot as a bar. Uh, bar chart or a stacked area chart. So I'll do the, I'll, I'll get the same values out here, uh, revenue and uh, expense. And you see the second bar showing right on top of that. And the commission data. So it's quite similar, but uh, it gives you a bar representation on one top of the, one top of the other. So two more visuals before uh, we can see how we can interplay between these uh, visual components as uh, filters by, by clicking the mouse on the respective uh, uh, donor uh, chart by the customer or the specific month or a driver. So this is a map visual. Once you choose the city, it will plot the city by the size of a revenue. Uh, and the revenue is plotted as a bubble out here. You can pan in, you can zoom, you can pinch. You have all those capabilities with this particular visual. So the age of the bubble uh, indicates what's the amount of revenue in comparison with the other uh, cities out here. So one last visual. So this is, again, a bar chart. But we can compare uh, the expense and revenue next to each other. So I'll plot the revenue and the expense. So when you lay these two uh, metrics next to each other, 
you'll be able to see the uh, revenue always been more than the expense. And that's uh, very good to know as soon as you see the visual. But it's only so good if you could improve uh, the insights into this by plotting last year's revenue on top of this, you'll be able to see how well, let me take this off, there's a, there's a different way to represent the last year revenue. It's called the line value. You can overlay the last year revenue either as a bar, uh, as you just saw, or there's a line component that gets plotted on each one of these uh, months. And this red line is what uh, is showing the last year revenue. And there's something that the business is doing right. So this year's revenue every month is being consistently greater than the last year. So this is how quickly you can draw insights by plotting some uh, easy visual components available from Power BI. So a couple more things out here. Uh, by default, it orders a, a, a data by the customer's name. You can sort it by the revenue. What that gives you is uh, the highest revenue grossing uh, from, from a specific customer is uh, plotted by the area of the donut. So to visually see how the data has uh, performed over a, a specific driver or a month or a city, you can visually select a chunks of the donut. And what I just did was I selected three of them. and and it, it's the top three customers' revenue data, expense, and the commission, the other widgets appropriately have responded now. So that's how easy it is to quickly drag and drop these visuals and plot the data once you have it captured. It could be, uh, right, what I have is from one Excel file. You could do the same if you have on-premises data and if you have data in your on, uh, online, in your OneDrive, you can bring them all together without having to do a whole lot of work and everything available right from within Power BI tool to, to start seeing your visuals. So I'll name this uh, page as revenues and expenses. So what we just saw were the basic visual components available from Power BI. And this is the trucking data. We'll, we'll present the same trucking the carrier information as the, as the drivers have uh, realized by trucking this uh, furniture and other things from uh, one city to other city in, in rich visuals. So what, there's a huge community out here. What, what you're seeing on the browser is uh, uploaded onto uh, the Power BI environment. And uh, there's a Microsoft development team and the other community who develop rich visual components. And some of these components can be downloaded pretty easily onto your Power BI environment and start rendering uh, using these visual components. So when you click on this, uh, the, the respective visual that you're interested in uh, using to render your data, you can download a sample. And there's a visual file that you can download onto your local uh, box and import that into your Power BI desktop environment and start uh, rendering the visualizations. So for now, I have a line dot chart to go through and also a globe map. You'll be able to see how animated they are and how rich in visualizations. So there are several different uh, visualizations. I think uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, since two weeks ago, there, there's been like two more components added to this library. So let's Let's start a new page and let's import this visual. I have already downloaded this globe and also the line dot chart. All I have to do is import. Globe map is the first one. And we'll see that right here. And the second visual is the line dot chart. So we have both the visuals that uh, come into Power BI environment. So let's plot and see how, what this uh, globe map has to render. Since it's a map, uh, we'll do the same, the city and the revenues. So you see this gives you an opportunity to play with the globe, turn it around, the rich animation that it provides, and the data is plotted uh, as a bar height. 
So that's how uh, this renders the measures uh, that that we just selected, and you could choose other more uh, measures, and it will plot it right uh, next to it. So in this case, it also gives you additional information. There's a heat intensity. So let's see how the expense uh, is rendered as a heat intensity. So this is a kind of visual that's usually used in uh, social media and other like uh, Twitter or Facebook to see where's the population coming in from and where's the uh, most responses coming in from. Uh, deep red going down to the light yellow as, as the population or the footprint of uh, whatever you're trying to look for. So this is the first uh, custom visualization. And let's see the line dot chart. So I plot the data against month. And let's see how the expenses are rendered by the month. So since this is an animated uh, uh, visual, you have to click on the play button. It rolls up the expenses for that particular month and shows it to you in, in the form of a bubble, just like we saw on the map in the previous page. So you can hover over each of these uh, to see uh, how, what, what's the total expense been for that particular month. So for the month five, it's, it's about, uh, you see the expense uh, totaled up right there, 157,000. So once you click on this uh, visual, you'll see the data responding on the other widget appropriately, just like we saw in the previous page. So that's, that's how rich and how it can interplay by visually filtering these components as, as you see the data and you, you wanted to, uh, and you want to explore more information about that. Let's name this as custom visual. So now have, we have this uh, report completed. Uh, this is the first demo. We'll, we'll publish this onto a Power BI service. This, this report is just available on your local box, and it's only so good if you're not able to collaborate and gather insights from the business users who understand the business well. Once they start seeing this metric and the rich visualizations, they will be able to give you more insights what exactly happened in the month of uh, you know, October. Why is, why is the uh, expense being so high? So before you have this published onto a Power BI uh, uh, service, you need to save this onto your local environment. So I'll save this report as a trucking data, trucking info. So once it's saved, you can publish this right from Power BI desktop. Since I've already provided the credentials of the Power BI service, the user and password is already available. So all you have to do is just click on the publish. And it gives me an option to choose an area where this needs to be published. We have three workspaces. A workspace is an area where you can bundle your data set, reports, and the dashboard. So my workspace is the default workspace. I'm going to publish it right there. So while it's getting published, Let's see the Power BI service. So this is this is a, a browser based, and this is a my workspace where we should uh, soon be seeing this uh, report that we just created. And these are some of the sample uh, dashboards and reports that were already created and uh, published onto uh, this Power BI service. So th this service is available on a monthly subscription basis. There's a free subscription with a limited amount of space available in the cloud, and there is a, a, a paid service which is available for a certain, uh, again, uh, you, you get a limited uh, size for the storage, and you can add more storage to that. So there you see with an asterisk, that's the trucking information report just coming into, the, into my Power BI service. That's the first page where we had all the default uh, visual components that we put together. And you can do the same thing that we did on the Power BI desktop. You can choose the visual filters out here, and the other widgets respond to, to the data as we selected these top, top three customers. So let's see how the custom visual is rendered. 
it's again still the same rich animation available for people on the browser. So all you have to do with this is uh, you can create dashboards out of this and then once you have the dashboard created you can publish it to other members within the organization. So to, to create a dashboard all you have to do is choose the visual that you're interested in and I will create a new dashboard. You can publish it to the same dashboard or you can pick and choose the components and, and create a new dashboard. So I created a trucking dashboard as a new one and start pinning some of these visuals. So the reason why I'm pinning this visual into a dashboard is to show how the same data as you see on the browser is rendered on a mobile device. So that's the first dashboard that we created, the trucking dashboard. So this is the transactional information as you capture what happens within your business is what we saw some insights on. So the next example, we will go through the social media data. The Facebook uh, is, is what we've chosen to demo right now. What, what the Facebook data gives you is uh, how the followers on your Facebook page are responding to the Facebook post that you put out there. So that will give you an opportunity to analyze uh, when, uh, what kinds of posts you got the most responses, the likes and the shares. And similarly, you can, you can do the same with the Twitter data and the other social media data. So let me choose get data. Facebook is not one of the common ones, so it's available under the online services. I'll choose Facebook, connect to Facebook. I will choose the Microsoft BI post and there's a post data available from Microsoft along with the feeds, friends and lots of other information that you can get back from Facebook. I'll choose post for now. Since I've already signed in with my credentials, it won't ask me for the use ID and password again. So this is the sample um, uh, Facebook data that's going to come back to us. These are the various fields. There's an ID and along with that several messages. And it also has uh, certain uh, additional information which has got more than one column and we'll explore what this is in a minute. And there are pictures that have been uploaded, links and several different uh, information which is coming back as an API uh, that you can do some analysis on. I will load this data into Power BI. So it's loading, uh, it's querying the uh, Facebook API and bringing all the data that we just uh, saw uh, where it gave us a glimpse of the data that's going to come in from Facebook. Post. So that's the, those are the fields. We're going to do a little more uh, work than just doing the visual in this case. We'll edit the queries out here. It's a simple um, API data coming from graph.facebook.com but some data out here uh, we need to parse it so that we can see better uh, visualization. We can drill down on certain uh, the date component and the time component and we can see the count bundled as a record. So the created time has got a component of date concatenated with the T and the time component. So let's split this first. The ribbon on the top out here gives you several different functions and several uh, capabilities to split and like, you know, transform the data into a different uh, data type. So I'll, first thing I'll do is split this by the delimiter, which is a T which is a custom delimiter and not a comma or any of the common ones available. So I'll say split it exactly where you see the, where, where you see the character T. So that's the first, fee, uh, first uh, data set in the string and it, it identified this particular data as a date and transformed it appropriately and recognized this as a date field. So I'll rename this as created date. And the second part is the time. So it did not recognize this as a time because it's got a plus and a couple of zeros after that. 
So it did not transform it appropriately and identify this as a time component. All it did was split it exactly where the character T was identified. So I'm going to pass this. So once you click on parse, it will go through every one of these uh, uh, elements and uh, converts this into a time component. So it has this identified as time. I'll rename this. So let's look at one more uh, field to edit. So as I said, this has got more than one field, like the time or date or a message, so which is bundled as a record. So let's see what that, what that contains here. All it contains in this case is just a count. It's basically a count on a message that you put out there or a photograph or a link that you post on Facebook. So I'll uncheck this. All this does is a prefix of shares, the actual name of the column to the fields that it has bundled uh, within that. So let's get the count here as the actual values instead of a record. And it did not recognize this as a number, so it's, it's showing as a string and a number still. So I'm going to pass this and transform this into a whole number. So I change the type as a whole number for the obvious reasons that you'll see once you start uh, uh, creating some widgets. So I'm done with whatever transformation I need to do. So some of the basic transformation can be done right from within Power BI by editing the query. So I'm done with this. I'll close and apply all the changes. And we'll see those changes coming in right here. So we should see the created date and time, which we'll start using to plot some of the graphs. So there you see the created date and the created time. So let's choose the first visual. The type is the type of a Facebook post. Is It's either a link, photo, status, or a video that's uploaded onto Facebook. So let's see a different visual than the previous, uh, the previous one that we saw. So this is called a tree map. What we can see here is a count of this showing you a footprint of which of these Facebook types have been posted the most. So the area of uh, photos indicates that's been the most amount of Facebook posts, followed by links, video, and status. You can do some additional customization, uh, which is available on the right, just before the uh, under the visualizations. And you can do some amount of formatting out here. You can change the data colors, the status, video, link, and photo to different colors if you want to. And uh, you can enable the data labels categories and other a uh, couple of other things by just clicking enabling them. So we'll do for this example, we'll just uh, enable a legend. And it's showing the legend on the top. I'll just switch, to, switch it to the right. So that's the first visual in this example. And let's, let's do uh, a bar chart. So on the bar chart, let's see. Uh, a date along the axis and then we'll see uh, what are the shares basically how many people have acknowledged uh, to these so there you go so that's the number of shares the count is telling us by the year so as soon as we drop this date you can can go down to see the same information at a year level, at a quarter, month, or a day level. All you have to do is there's a drill down capability that you can just turn on out here, and then you can start drilling down. It started with the year on the axis. Now we are able to see the same data at a quarter level. You can further go down into a month, and you can also the last. Uh, drill down capability is to a day level. So it was as simple as that. Once we drop the date field out here, it's able to recognize that you can drill down and see the same shares, how, how they came in uh, on your Facebook post at the year uh, capacity, at the quarter, month, or a day. So just a simple extension to this. You want to see the same data, how it uh, came in by the time. All you have to do is drop this time field out here, and you can drill down further into a time. 
that's how easy it is that you can start uh, leveraging the data that you captured to understand if you've been getting more Facebook posts during the AM hours, during the PM hours, and you can top this uh, from, from a particular city to see where the most responses have been coming from for a particular Facebook post. So this is about the two visuals that we wanted to showcase uh, from the Facebook, the social media data. I'll rename this page as Facebook. And just like the last one, this has to be saved before we publish this onto Power BI service. So I'll save this as fb.pbix. That's the extension uh, with the Power BI. Now that it's saved, I'll publish this onto the Power BI service. And I'll again choose the same default workspace, which is a My Workspace. So just like the trucking uh, data, we should start seeing this new uh, report coming in and also the data set from the uh, Facebook feeds. So once we have this data, what we're going to do next is consume the same information, the report and the dashboard from the mobile device. As I navigate through the mobile device, you'll be able to see this information uh, live. So there we see the Facebook report coming in. And we have the same capabilities within the browser as well. You can drill up and go up to the level of a year and down till the uh, respective time. So I'm going to pin this also. Uh, we, we pin the tracking data one visual at a time, but you have an option to pin the entire page to the dashboard. So the advantage of pinning this onto a dashboard is you can click on this and share it with the rest of the members in the organization. All you have to do is uh, type in their email ID, and once they are on the Power BI uh, as, as the users who are subscribed for the service, you can share it with them. And they will be able to uh, uh, drill further or do the visual filters and provide some insights as exactly what happened with the business during a specific month or why did we realize more revenues. So that's the Facebook data uh, dashboard that we have published out here. So let's switch now and see how the same data is rendered on a mobile device. So to go over that, what I've done is I'm remoting from my mobile phone as I see and navigate on my mobile device. Uh, this is a Samsung uh, S6 uh, mobile phone that I have in my hand. And uh, as I navigate, you'll be able to see the screen. And I'm going to launch the Power BI app. So these are dashboards from the previous refresh. And you see the Facebook data and the trucking information is just coming in. So let's see the trucking data. So you see the Power BI uh, app is, is so rich uh, with, with respect to adjusting itself to the form factor. So it's got the frameworks and, uh, and the capability to render based on the real estate the way you're consuming the same information in a portrait or landscape mode, it renders itself appropriately either into a single widget at a time or two widgets or a three widgets and appropriately render it. So you can do a couple more things on the Power BI mobile. And uh, let's see what, what other uh, functionalities are available now. So I'll choose this widget. What we can do in the Power BI mobile app is you can annotate. So some of the annotation capabilities that are available here, you can do a freehand drawing with this first uh, icon that you see below. The second one is you can put some smileys on it. Or you can do a free type text. Or you can also record information and share it with other users. So let's see. Uh, let's, let's try to add some information onto this. Let's see what exactly happened in January. So I, I want to know. I am curious to find out what exactly happened in January. So I'm typing in this text. So I said, uh, what happened here? And point to that uh, specific month, because we see a dip in the revenues in January. And there uh, I have this uh, information captured with some annotation. So I'm done with this. So let's share this 
with some of the business users so we can start getting some insights about this. So I'm typing in my own email ID and I'll shoot this away. So while it lands on my email box, let's see the report, how it renders on the mobile device. So that was a dashboard. So I'll choose the same trucking information and you see it automatically flipped into a landscape mode and started uh, rendering the page. So it identified automatically the best way to see the report data is in a landscape mode and appropriately flipped it. So you get the same uh, capabilities out here. You can pinch this data, click on the respective donut uh, area or the month on this uh, stack chart to start seeing the visuals uh, appropriately on the other uh, widgets. So that's about uh, on the first mobile device what uh, we wanted to go over. That's the Android uh, Power BI mobile app. So I just saw the email landing. So that's the email we just sent out from the mobile device. So there you see how easy it was to capture that particular image and put some notes on top of that and send it out to the community so that you can get some feedback on exactly what you're looking for. So let's switch to an iOS device now. So the iOS device gives you a couple more capabilities uh, than the Android. So you'll be able to set some notifications out here. So let me choose the iOS device. It's got to sync with my device. Okay, there. It's ready. I'll connect to my iOS phone. I have an iPhone 5. So I can't remote the same way as I did from my Android mobile phone. All I can do is uh, send, send back some screenshots as I see on my uh, iPhone. So that, that's the screenshot that I just uh, posted back. I'm going to launch the Power BI app. So that's the Power BI app. Okay. Now the two dashboards have refreshed. And let's look at one of the sample uh, dashboards that was already created. So that's the sales and marketing data. So, so uh, interesting thing on uh, specific uh, uh, widgets that we can do with the iOS app is, for example, you have a unique dimensional data out here of 50K, which is a total volume. You can, I'm clicking on that. And with that, uh, you, can, you can see some alerts uh, that you can enable. And this is the view I have right now on my mobile device. And that's the notification icon which you can enable. So I'm going to click on the notifications. So it gives me a high value and a low value above and below. So if I enable that, and set a specific number here, I'm going to get a notification once that's enabled. And, and once it shoots above that particular value or goes below, below a particular value. I'm going to save this. So once I save this, you should see the notifications enabled. So that's, that's what's showing you right now, that the notifications enabled. So that's about what we wanted to showcase from the iOS mobile device. So there we uh, just demo to you uh, the transactional data from trucking uh, information that we had captured and uh, Facebook social media data and an app how, how you can be consumed from an Android device and an iOS device. Thanks, Ravi. That was, that was in fact uh, fantastic. And now we'd like to step back and request the attendees to pose your queries. Please use the tool in the control panel, mark question box, to do so. Okay, we have, we have our first question in. Can we refresh our Power BI report once uploaded to the cloud, SharePoint or PowerBI.com? Ravi? 
Yes, uh, the refresh capabilities are available uh, from the Power BI service. So you can have your data on uh, within within your uh, uh, environment in your office premises, either a SQL Server or any such uh, data, and that can be sent onto the Power BI service. There's something called a data management gateway. Using this, you can enable or set an interval. Uh, at, at that particular interval, the data will be refreshed, and all the uh, BI components uh, that's un uh, with the underlying data to it will get refreshed. Thanks, Ravi. Okay, we have our next question. Which for which platform Power BI app is available? So as we just saw, the, the Power BI app is available for your Android devices and your iOS devices. It's just on the Windows, uh, uh, surprisingly, it's only available on the tablet uh, version. Uh, they, they say it's going to be soon available on the Windows phones as well. Okay, we have another one for you, Ravi. Uh, can Power BI be integrated with SharePoint? Yes, uh, Power BI can be integrated with SharePoint in the sense that you can get data from your uh, uh, the documents or the data or the Excel or other information that's available in the list or so from the SharePoint environment. But you know, and also from OneDrive, you can bring the data right into uh, Power BI. But what cannot be done is having the Power BI embedded within the SharePoint site. It, it's a separate launch right now uh, by itself. Uh, as we just saw, uh, the Power BI app, it will be a separate session. OK, we got one more. I'm specifically interested in the connectivity to the to a SAP BW system. Is this possible? I'm running on traditional BW 7.x environment. Well, uh, we need to check exactly from SAP. There are several different connectors available uh, from Power BI environment, and they're completely uh, continuously evolving. Uh, more and more connectors are available. And there are several in the beta uh, mode right now that you can connect and uh, render the data. I think there's an SAP connector. But uh, if, if you're uh, interested, we could send you a response back, explore this a little more, and send you exactly uh, what, what is available right now within the Power BI environment. OK. Ravi, I, I guess another question before again. Uh, we, I think we have time for a few more. I've got one more. It says, uh, can we take Oracle BI data model as source to connector to connect from Power BI and create visualization? OK, uh, that, that's one thing we need to definitely check. But you can definitely get data from the Oracle database. There are connectors to Oracle database. And as long as you can connect using the ODBC connector, you you will be able to grab information from those data sources as well and render the visualizations within the Power BI environment. OK, I guess that's, <clears throat> yeah, we're running short of time. Uh, you could please connect with us uh, on the email address uh, that was uh, shown to you uh, a little earlier. And uh, we'll be more than happy to answer most of your queries. So thank you all for your time, and we hope that this session was an eye-opener. We look forward to your continued support and hope to see all of you in our next webinar. Meanwhile, feel free to reach out to us with questions, share your thoughts and suggestions on topics you wish to get, gain further insights into. Thank you again, and have a great day ahead. Bye.